to my team for their efforts as well. Yeah, British boxing. One thing when I first started boxing, I said I want to bring the heavyweight division back alive in the UK, and I think we've done that. So well done to everyone here as well. After his electrifying showdown with Daniel Dubois, British heavyweight sensation Anthony Joshua dropped a bombshell that's shaking the boxing world. At 37, with rumors of retirement swirling for months, the former unified heavyweight champion has hinted that his time in the ring might be coming to an end. As one of the sport's most iconic figures, Joshua's potential exit leaves fans and fighters alike bracing for a new era without him at the helm. We spot hundreds of rounds, didn't it? You, you cracked him, Daniel. So you, you know you can hurt. It's sparring. Now we're fighting. It's different, you know. Think it's different. Ready to go. Let's think it's move on now. You can move on now. <laughs> oh. Anthony Joshua's rumored retirement signals the end of an era defined by championship triumphs, unforgettable battles, and his meteoric rise from Olympic gold medalist to global icon. With every victory, he captured the hearts of fans worldwide. But now, as whispers of retirement grow louder, the boxing community is left on edge. Joshua's latest statements give us a glimpse into his mindset, reflecting on a legendary journey that's brought him to this pivotal moment. Let's explore the highlights, challenges, and turning points that have shaped one of the most storied careers in heavyweight history. You gotta really put your foot down sometimes and let someone know. I ain't here to play games. Watch yourself. And that's what it was. If someone told you, if someone told you, come on, let's go now. You know, oh, oh, sir, no, I'm not ready. I said, what? Let's go. Two years ago, Anthony Joshua set a firm deadline for his boxing career, retirement by 37. Originally, he had his sights on hanging up the gloves at 35, but with his body still holding strong, he pushed the timeline back, determined to give it a few more years. Now, having reached that milestone, Joshua feels the moment has arrived. After a career that catapulted him to global stardom, he believes the time is right to step away from the sport that made him an icon. But I just didn't want to highlight that fight and say that's the only thing that's brought change to my boxing style and how I wanted to approach my boxing because it's happened in the amateurs right the way through my career. I've taken losses, but I definitely use it as a platform to get stronger, to build on. Obviously, mine's echoed to the world, like my wins and losses and how I deal with them. Um, always different, always different. But how I've moved forward from my last loss is I went around the world, went to Texas for a bit, um, Worked with Derek, which was really good. I actually went and sourced the trainer from America with Robert Garcia as well, which was a great experience. Anthony Joshua has just set the stage for a bombshell showdown that could be his last. The former heavyweight champ revealed a shocking desire. Before I retire, I want to take on Nunganu. With rumors of retirement swirling, Joshua's bold declaration to fight UFC superstar Francis Nganu hints that he's ready to make one final explosive statement in the ring. Could this be the last time we see Joshua in action before he steps away from the sport? Fans are on edge, waiting to see if Joshua's dream fight becomes his grand finale. You're 34 now. Every year, every Christmas that passes, you get that little bit older, a little bit <laughs> wiser, a little bit closer to one day retiring, as you spoke about earlier. When it comes to the beginning of Anthony Joshua in terms of on the public scene, it yeah. was at 2012 Olympics. Yeah. So the Olympics is back around. Four yeah. years from now, the Olympics will be back around. Do you yeah. think you'll still be in the ring four years from now? Because you'd be 38, same age as Arta Betabiev, who had an amazing performance of the weekend. Do you see yourself carrying on that long? Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. When asked if there's any chance we'll see him in the ring at 38, Joshua didn't hesitate. Definitely not. It was a clear and firm answer from the heavyweight star, signaling that his days in the sport are numbered. With such a definitive response, it's hard not to speculate that Joshua's next fight could be his last. Fans are now left wondering just how close we are to witnessing the end of an era, with Joshua ready to exit the ring on his own terms. In that time frame, I don't want you to say a date because obviously anything can happen, yeah. but what do you want to achieve before you finally hang up your boots? Beat Francis and Ghani. And that's my main goal. You know, you, you, yeah. If you look at it from where I'm sitting, that's my main goal right now, is to just beat Francis and Ghani. Anthony Joshua's career has never been driven by the allure of money. It's always been about passion, legacy, and the pursuit of greatness. It's tough, and when I feel like I don't have much power left, that's when I'll retire, Joshua shared, giving fans a glimpse into his mindset. His decision to leave the sport isn't about cashing in, but about knowing when his body can no longer deliver at the elite level. You see, when you put, when you, when you make about money, you make, you make silly decisions. Because in the fight game, you have to face the music. 
money can't be a driving force. So it's not a money. It's because I got a chance to be great at something. It's I got a chance to be good at something. It's tough. Don't get me wrong. Do you know what I was thinking today when I was in the gym? I see one or two people yawning. And I thought, the general public are tired. Imagine how tired an athlete is. <laughs> having to push themselves every day, like physically. You know what I mean? So I was thinking, if the general public are tired, imagine an athlete that should be tired. Joshua believes that chasing money leads to dangerous missteps in the fight game. When you think about money, you make silly decisions. In the fight game, you have to face the music, he said, reflecting his deeper motivations. For him, it's never been just about titles or paychecks, pushing himself to his absolute limits, proving that greatness is earned through sacrifice and resilience. But when you look back at his storied career, what stands out? What do you think has been Joshua's most significant achievement? From Olympic gold to heavyweight glory, countless moments define his legacy. Retirement. So, Anthony Joshua, I'm going to quote him here. He said, I've always said 35. I'm 35 in October. I'm thinking another two years or so if my body holds out. I've set up certain businesses that I can transition into naturally, which don't rely on me being at the forefront. Yeah, he's... um. I know he's a stakeholder with his own. He's 258. He's got a lot of other things outside of boxing. So he will definitely be a busy guy whenever he retires. But yes, he doesn't necessarily need boxing. He doesn't. He could retire now, really. It's not like he's fighting for money. He doesn't need to fight really at all if he didn't want to. He's made enough from boxing and he's got those business interests. But you would imagine he still has stuff that he wants to do from a fighting sense, from a career point of view in boxing. It's almost unbelievable that Anthony Joshua, turning 35 this October, is already contemplating the end of his career. It feels like just yesterday when a young, hungry Joshua stormed onto the scene, unleashing his raw power and captivating the boxing world with his meteoric rise. But as the years flew by, so did the battles. His body has endured countless wars, and now, the end looms nearer than fans ever expected. It's crazy to think that Joshua's going to be 35 come October, because it just, it genuinely seems like only yesterday he made his pro debut. It seems like only yesterday he was fighting Charles Martin for the IBF title. In fact, actually, come, well, we're nearly at that. And I think it was April 9th, was it not? 2016. So, yeah, we're nearly at that anniversary of the Charles Martin fight. And... 2016 was a weird year in boxing. It was a crap year in boxing. For those who were watching boxing, you'll know it was a crap year. There wasn't much happening in 2016. Well, there was fights happening, but they didn't really have major... There wasn't any real big fights. You know, Amir Khan uh, Canelo. The thought of Joshua stepping away feels premature for many, given the legendary moments he's delivered. From knockout victories to reclaiming titles, his career has been nothing short of epic. Yet, with each fight, he's hinted that time is catching up. Is it really the end? Or does Joshua have one more iconic fight left to solidify his legacy before calling it quits? Fans are left on edge, questioning if the heavyweight king is ready to hang up the gloves for good. You know, I was watching them thinking, Oh, I'd love for, you know, Wilder to fight Klitschko, Joshua to fight Klitschko, or Fury and Klitschko. I'd love to just, you know, be gone, and these are the guys now who are on top. And it's sad in a way, because we're kind of seeing the end, you know. I don't imagine Usyk sticking around much longer. I don't imagine Fury sticking around much longer. Joshua was talking about calling the quits in two years, 2026, which is not that far away. It's really not. You don't miss two years flying. I mean, you really don't. I mean, I've already said 2016 does not seem like a long... And eight years in the grand scheme of things is not really a long time in the grand scheme of things. It's a bitter pill to swallow watching time race by so quickly. And now we're staring down the likely end of Anthony Joshua's reign in the ring. The end of an era feels heartbreakingly imminent as the clock ticks away on one of boxing's brightest stars. As we brace ourselves for what could be Joshua's final fights, it's a stark reminder of how fleeting greatness can be, leaving fans with a tinge of sadness as we witness the sunset of an extraordinary career. In the grand scheme of things. But for it to go by just like that, it's crazy. And that's the difference between, I guess, one era to the next. You know, Joshua, Wilder, Wilder was a young champion at the time. Fury had just thrown Klitschko a few months earlier. The heavyweight division was just, we were like, oh yeah, these are all the, the new guys. And now you do look at them as the old guard because they are on their way out. Not in the sense of they're finished, as in they're over the hill, but you just know, like, Time waits for no man. You know, the, the age is there and you're like, they won't be around much longer. It really is crazy to think about it, really. One of the most electrifying matchups fans have been begging for is a showdown between Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. It's the fight the boxing world can't stop talking about, a clash between two British giants that would shake the sport to its core. There's always been, though, like, 
I don't think I can retire today because I need that Joshua fight. We have been trying to make that fight for years, right? Why do you need that fight? Because it's like, it's the fight that people want to see. It's the fight that I want to see but, as a boxing fan. But then fan. they'll be, oh, I need Joshua too, because I, the result he wasn't happy with or I wasn't happy with it. I just fear there'll always be an Anthony Joshua. I've already said that. The law, like the, the Roman general said, yeah. and we beat everybody now. Fury, never one to hold back, has been clear about his intentions. He wants Joshua in the ring before the chance slips away. The question now is, will we finally witness this monumental battle? Or will Joshua's looming retirement leave fans wondering what could have been? He said, yep, yeah, there'll always be somebody else in the beginning of the Gladiator movie. Yeah. Remember it? Yeah, yeah. Where he goes, we've conquered the world. And he goes, there'll always be somebody else to fight. There'll always be another war. Yeah. And there's, there's going to be somebody else. Like, before, like for the last four or five years, there's been this three-headed monster, me, Wilder, and Joshua. Joshua and Wilder have been slain, and I'm the last one standing. All of a sudden, you've got some new people. Anthony Joshua has achieved global fame that extends far beyond the ring. His blend of physical prowess, humility, and charisma has won him legions of fans around the world. Joshua's rise to heavyweight champion is not just a story of athletic excellence, but a powerful testament to his relentless hard work, unshakable determination, and unwavering self-belief. His journey has captivated hearts everywhere, proving that greatness is born from both talent and tireless dedication. So you go from that fight to the Anthony Joshua fight. Yes. So tell me about the preparation and leading up to that fight. In fact, the preparation for the Anthony Joshua fight, then I started, you know, I, after having like four months of training camp for the Tyson Fury fight, I had this feeling, you know, and then I get a little, um, I get a little confident. Now I know how it works, like 10 rounds, and then it uh, was pretty good. You know, the Tyson Fury fight, um, I think I spar, I sparred like 10 rounds for like two weeks. Yeah, like four, four sparring of 10 rounds, barely. But the Tyson, the Anthony Joshua fight, six weeks before the fight, I was, no, I wasn't 10. No, the Tyson Fury, yeah. Joe Reagan also stated, Anthony Joshua has more stamina than Rocky Marciano and Joe Lewis. Joe Rogan's praise for Anthony Joshua paints him as a modern day superhero in the boxing world. Like boxers today, if you look at like Anthony Joshua, who's the heavyweight champion of the world now. Is if he? You look at him, yeah. He's a, a, a English fellow. He's a tank. I mean, he's a- Is he? Oh man, you look at Anthony Joshua. He looks like, like a superhero. Do they? Do those guys have as much stamina as these guys do though? Oh yeah, they do oh, today. They did? Yeah, because the conditioning methods that they have today are just so superior. They understand mm. rest and recovery, and they monitor your heart rate, and you know they're they're monitoring lactic acid buildup. And with a reputation for incredible punching power and relentless stamina, Joshua has consistently delivered devastating blows that have led to numerous knockouts and victories. His ability to maintain peak performance across rounds and opponents has set him apart, earning him a place among the legends of the sport. Joshua's combination of raw power and enduring energy truly defines his legendary status in the ring. Joshua's physical attributes, combined with his skill and technique, make him one of the most dangerous fighters in the sport. Anthony Joshua's a big puncher. He's a he big is. puncher and he punch he's fast. He's fast and he's a one punch knockout puncher as opposed to Tyson Fury can knock guys out with one punch but really he wears guys out. He beats guys up and then takes them out later. Like the uh, uh, Deontay Wilder fight, like he beats him up and then he takes him out. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas Joshua can take people out with one shot. He's a, he's a much bigger, no, physically much more powerful guy. Nganu, known for his devastating knockout power, suffered a loss in their previous encounter with Joshua. Reflecting on the bout, Nganu said, I was confused at the time, but it was a big achievement for Joshua. Beating an opponent like Nganu further cemented Joshua's legacy as one of the greatest heavyweights of his era. But Joshua isn't content with just one victory. He wants to definitively prove himself by defeating Nganu once again before retiring. Um, what? What do you remember about the fight? What was different watching it? Oh, even like feeling it. It wasn't... Even before I went to watch it, I get in the uh, ring. Was... Wasn't... Was... You know, wasn't feeling myself. And the first round, when he knocked me down, like... I fell 
and I was like, did I slip? Joshua's career has been a roller coaster of highs and lows, yet his dedication to the sport has remained unshakable. Through every triumph and setback, he's shown a relentless commitment that defines his journey. Me down, make me fall like this punch, because I felt the punch, but it wasn't the punch that would knock me, knock me down. You know, so that's when I really get confused at that time. I'm like, damn, what? But this is the thing. From that moment, I can knock down with the punch that wasn't that hard. Even when the going got tough, Joshua's passion for boxing never faltered, proving that his love for the sport is as enduring as his incredible talent. You're either that guy or you're not. Don't let the belts make you. Because when they're not around your waist, you're not going to move like a champion. So for me, I've always felt move like a champion regardless if the belts are around you or not. But in terms of the pressure, just come. Since Joshua's stunning defeat to Andy Ruiz in 2019, the question of retirement has loomed large. That loss was a pivotal moment in his career, marking the first time he was decisively beaten. It shook fans and analysts alike, sparking debates about whether it signaled the end of Joshua's reign. This setback was more than just a loss. It was a defining moment that tested his resolve and reshaped his path in the sport. Anthony Joshua should retire. Knuckleheads, he should just shine up those gloves real nice, mount them on the wall behind him, and start a YouTube channel. But in all seriousness, that's the narrative and the opinion given to us by this toxic and bipolar boxing culture ever since he lost to Andy Ruiz all the way up to when he won and looked good again against Otto Valin. It shows you how fickle they want you to fight the best people, right? Which would entail as a fighter that you could potentially lose. But as soon as you lose, as soon as you lose, sometimes one fight, they're ready to discard you and toss you by the wayside. And I think it's absolutely unacceptable, not only from casual and hardcore boxing fans and pundits, but it's unacceptable from Hall of Fame inductee boxing journalists like Thomas Hauser, who as recently as May of 2023 was calling on Anthony Joshua to retire from the sport. And he stood on that after Anthony Joshua knocked out Robert Hellenius and continued to say the guy should retire. And listen, everybody's entitled to their opinion. And my opinion on Joshua, and you've heard it here a million times on this channel, was he did not look the same subsequent to the Andy Ruiz fight. He was still trying to find his identity. But the difference between me as a promoter who sees what these fighters go through and some of the others is that I'm willing to give the guy a benefit of the doubt and offer him the, uh, the opportunity to continue to find his identity, to find it and to come back better. Mike Tyson, a towering figure in boxing history, has lavished Anthony Joshua with high praise, calling him the king of heavyweight boxing. For a legend like Tyson to bestow such accolades is a powerful endorsement of Joshua's influence and stature in the sport. This recognition underscores Joshua's remarkable impact and solidifies his place among the elite heavyweights of all time. Well, listen, um, he's the king now. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. He's the king, he's the big man now on campus. I don't care how who's out now, the little guys making a lot. He's the big man on campus. Yeah. Cause the heavyweight champion is the man. Especially yeah. with a guy like that that's knocking guys out yeah. big. And he got the, and he looks like the heavyweight Spice champion. In a candid interview, Anthony Joshua laid bare the relentless sacrifices behind his boxing career. Reflecting on his journey, he said, I've given my all to this game. This isn't just about physical exertion. It's about pouring every ounce of energy and dedication into his craft. Joshua continued, Every fight, every training camp has been about being the best. These powerful words capture the essence of his commitment, a testament to the sheer willpower and perseverance that have driven him to the pinnacle of the sport. His story isn't just about victories and titles. It's a portrait of the personal cost and unyielding passion that have fueled his rise to greatness. Well, listen, you know what I mean? As I said, like, 18, I decided to change my life differently. So, um, yeah. And the only thing, winning. Anthony Joshua has always harbored lofty ambitions, and one of his greatest dreams has been to claim the WBC Heavyweight Championship. Despite his many triumphs and accolades, this coveted title has remained just out of reach. Who is Anthony Joshua? Is someone who's going through life, but at this present time,
The pursuit of the WBC belt has fueled his drive and determination, making it a defining goal in his illustrious career. As Joshua continues to chase this elusive crown, his journey becomes not just a quest for glory, but a testament to his relentless ambition and unyielding spirit. Bryson Garni beat the WBC ever champion of the world. I should be WBC ever champion of the world, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I think he beat the WBC champion of the world. Actually. Let's see, let's see. He's a great fighter, man. Looking back, Joshua's journey is filled with victories, championships, and iconic moments. He has been a two-time unified heavyweight champion, and his achievements have solidified his place in boxing history. How will Joshua be remembered once he steps away from the sport? Today we are talking about Anthony Joshua's story so far, because that story, at least in boxing terms, is nearing the final chapter. And we want to know how it's going to end. Will it end with an undisputed world title? Will it end with a win over Tyson Fury? All of that legacy is on the line in this fight against Daniel Dubois because if you lose this well that's all a write-off and that story started in 1989 in Watford when AJ was born and his name was actually his full name I've got this written up here because I don't want to fuck this up Anthony Oluwafemi Olaseni Joshua and he was nicknamed Femi as a part of his middle name at school uppercut absolutely finishes Dillian White in spectacular fashion and, and I've seen this image so many times of AJ getting up on those ropes and screaming like the lion in the lion's den. Oh, what a fucking performance that was. That was where he became a bit of a household name, really. That was the moment. And in AJ's very next fight, he would fight Charles Martin for the IBF heavyweight title of the world. It was a huge opportunity for him and a chance to just put the, the full stop on the last performance against Dillian White to say, not only am I that guy, I'm now world champion. And the guy that he was, he wants legacy. He wants a track record of, I fought everyone in my era, the best of the best, and I beat them all. And he backed himself. And for that reason, I've got to give him fucking credit. What I will say about this fight is my, my main takeaway from the Usyk fight was the movement of Alexander Usyk. It, it felt like in that first fight Anthony Joshua not only was his game plan all wrong and obviously he's changed trainers since then for that reason but he was chasing a shadow it was like a normal bloke versus Peter Pan or something Usyk was flying around that fucking ring he wasn't staying still for one second and AJ at the time was very much he needed to plant his feet to really do the damage to you and because Usyk wasn't stopping moving and the target wasn't staying still for more than a second he couldn't really put a dent in Usyk and to be fair to Usyk I think he had so much respect for the power of AJ. As Anthony Joshua's career reaches a pivotal crossroads, we're left reflecting on his extraordinary journey, one marked by championship triumphs, epic battles, and moments that have defined an era. From his meteoric rise to global stardom to the current whispers of retirement, Joshua's legacy is etched in the annals of boxing history. His pursuit of greatness, marked by sacrifices and unyielding passion, has captivated fans worldwide. But as we stand on the brink of potentially witnessing his final act, the big question remains. How will Joshua's story ultimately be remembered? Will he have one last epic fight to cement his legacy? Or will he leave us with a sense of what might have been? Share your thoughts and let us know what you think Joshua's greatest achievement is.